إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Hatim al-Asam, he had a profound statement. He said, تَعَاهَدْ نَفْسَكَ فِي ثَلَاثٍ إِذَا عَمِلْتَ فَذْكُرْ نَظَرَ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكِ وَإِذَا تَكَلَّمْتَ فَذْكُرْ سَمْعَ اللَّهِ مِنْكِ وَإِذَا سَكَتَّ فَذْكُرْ عِلْمَ اللَّهِ فِيكِ He said, command yourself with three affairs. When you perform an act, remember Allah's sight over you, that Allah is watching you. When you speak, remember Allah's hearing over you, that Allah can hear everything you're saying. And when you keep silent, remember Allah's knowledge about you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعْهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَنُونَ مُحِيطًا Allah says what means they conceal their evil intentions or their evil deeds and actions from the people, but they cannot conceal them from Allah. Whether it's in your heart, your mind, your body, whether you do it outward or inward as we're going to see, Nothing can be concealed from the Lord of all the worlds. And He is with them in knowledge when they spend, in the, when they spend the night in such a way, in such as He does not accept of speech and ever is Allah of what they do, encompassing. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the ones who want to be mu'mineen, believers with Allah, they have to be aware of this. And should never forget that every word, every action, every thought, every intention... Even if it's, just, if it's just buried in the depth of your heart, Allah is fully aware of it. Every concealed thing is known to Allah. So the believer wants to behave at every moment with an awareness of this fact. So that they live a life that's pleasing to their Lord. So that their Lord will have mercy upon them and reward them with Jannah. Allah says in the Quran, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ ما يكون من نجوى ثلاثة ثلاثة إلا هو رابعهم ولا خمسة إلا هو سادسهم ولا أدنى من ذلك ولا أكثر إلا هو معهم أينما كانوا ثم ينبئهم بما عملوا يوم القيامة إن الله بكل شيء عليم. Allah says what means have you not considered that Allah knows what's in the heavens and Allah knows what is in the earth? We miss this point. Because we think that Allah can maybe only see or comprehend what we're seeing and comprehending. وَالْعَيَادُ بِاللَّهِ Have you not considered that Allah knows everything that's happening in the heavens and the earth? There's no private conversation, even if there's just three of you. 
except that Allah would be the fourth one. Yani his hearing is with you. He can hear and see what you're saying and what you're doing. There is no five that are meeting, except that Allah will be the sixth of them, meaning with his knowledge and his eyesight and his hearing. And no less than that and no more, except that he is with them in knowledge wherever they are. Then he will inform them of what they did on the day of resurrection. Anything they plotted, thought, planned, intended to do, Allah will inform all of us of what those things were. Even if we thought it was just me and someone else. Two people, three people, four or five. Except that Allah, with His knowledge, is that additive. That addition to hear. Indeed, Allah is of all things knowing. Allah says, أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ And Allah يَعْلَمُ مَا يَسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Allah says what means? But do they not know that Allah knows what they conceal and what they declare? You can hide something from mom and dad. You can hide something from your husband or your wife. You could hide something from your children or from your parents. You can hide something from your brothers or your sisters, your workers or your neighbors or whatever it may be. But nothing is hidden from Allah. Nothing whatsoever. Whether you conceal it or declare it, Allah has full knowledge of it. In Allah لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء. Allah, indeed, from nothing is uh, uh, indeed from Allah, nothing is hidden in the earth nor in the heavens. عالم الغيب والشهادة. Allah knows the unseen and the seen. Nothing can be hidden from Him. ثم قال الله وهو الله في السماوات وفي الأرض يعلم سركم وجهركم ويعلم ما تكسبون. Allah says what means and He. Is Allah, the only deity, the only God, the only one, the only Lord, the only one worthy of worship. He is the one in the heavens and the earth. He knows your secret. He knows what you make public. He knows that which you earn. And He knows what your hands are going to put forth. And what your soul and your heart are intending. Allah has full knowledge of these things. The only Lord of the heavens and the earth. Your secrets what you make public, fully aware to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is where we have to be, to actualize this understanding. To know that we're not just trying to hide something from the people. You can hide from the people. Make sure there's no cameras that are focused on you that can see what you're doing or that you may be plotting or discussing. Any microphones that might be picking up your sound, that's all fine and dandy. Always know that Allah... The one above the seven heavens, above his arsh, the one who is above his creation, above his throne, which is above the seven heavens and the earth, that he has knowledge of everything. Nothing is hidden from him. Even if you think it is, you're gravely mistaken, and Allah will let you know that Yom al Qiyamah. Fatir is samawati wal ard. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And there is nothing that is like him. Nothing that is comparable to him. And he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Nothing is comparable to Allah. And whenever we bring these ayat, we need to remind ourselves of the correct aqidah, the aqidah of the Salaf al-Salih, of the righteous predecessors of this ummah. Those first three generations whom the Prophet he said, خَيْرٌ nas قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يُلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يُلُونَهُمْ The best of mankind is my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. يعني the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Tabi'een, the Tabi'een. Their aqidah with respect to Allah's sifat, His eyes, His face, His arms, His hands, His fingers, His shin, and the likes of these things that Allah revealed. They affirmed the description that Allah affirmed for Himself. And that His Messenger وسلم, described to us and explained, described, explained to us or mentioned to us. And we cannot change or distort or derive any meaning other than the actual thing that was revealed without any proof. So we affirm those things that Allah has, but they are not like His creation. In what way? In any way whatsoever. وَإِذَا تَكَلَّمْتَ فَذْكُرْ سَمْعَ اللَّهِ مِنْكِ When you speak, remember that Allah, He has full knowledge of everything you're saying. When you lie, when you backbite, when you slander, when you accuse, when you spread tales, قِيلَ وَقَالْ Getting into this, He said, She said. Playing that game, Allah is fully aware of what you're saying and what you're doing. He can see and hear everything. And His knowledge is with you. وَإِذَا سَكَتَّ فَذْكُرْ عِلْمَ اللَّهِ فِيكَ And when you're quiet or silent about things, know that Allah has full knowledge of what you remain quiet about. 
Especially in the terms of justice and adl, and what is right and what is correct. Abu Sa'id, he narrates, he said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول مَنْ رأى مُنْكِرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ رواه النساء وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet ﷺ was heard to have said Whoever amongst you sees an evil let him change it with his hands and if he's not able to change it with his hands let him change it with his tongue let him speak out about it and whoever cannot speak out about it then at least let him or her hate it in their hearts but this is the weakest of faith when we just remain silent and we do no action but my dear brothers and sisters in Islam this requires wisdom it requires ilm. It requires knowledge of many different actions, first and foremost of the deen, before you were to give that advice to someone, or to act, or to speak. Because Imam al-Bukhari, he even began his sahih with al-ilm qabla al-qawl wal-amal. Knowledge precedes action and speech. So it requires wisdom and knowledge, weighing the benefit and the harm, advising, not condemning. To advise, to give sincere advice rather than to condemn. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah he said, إِنَّ أَقْرَمُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The best in the sight of Allah is the one who has taqwa, who fears Allah, who is cautious with his deeds and his actions and his speech, him or her. They do what Allah is pleased with so that they can distance themselves from Allah's punishment. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيِّنُونَ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيِّنُونَ وَبَيْنُهُمَا أُمُورُ الْمُشْتَبِهَاتِ the halal is clear, the haram is clear. Between them is some little gray matters. Most of the people do not have any knowledge or do not know about these things. They take them for granted. Whoever stays away from those doubt for gray matters in the deen, they safeguard their deen, their religion, and their honor. But whoever goes into those doubtful gray matters, they're going to fall into haram. They will fall into it. So this taqwa with our speech, with our actions, knowing Allah sees you, hears you, no matter where you may be, no matter nobody else is around, no camera, no mic, Allah has full knowledge of you. Even what is in the depth of your body, Allah is fully aware of it. When you actualize this, you're better, you have that better chance to being from the muttaqeen, and Allah loves those who are righteous, may Allah make us from them. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Look at this same Ibn Atiyah al-Sa'di who said, وَكَانَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يبلغ العبد أن يكون من المتقين حتى يدع ما لا بأس به حضرا لما به البأس رواه ابن ماجة And this hadith is Hassan. Look at this beautiful hadith and implement it in your life. Actualize it. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, a person will not reach the status of being from the muttaqeen. You will not reach the status of being from the God-fearing, the God-conscious, the one who wants to يعني, keep his duty to his Lord so he distances himself from his Lord's punishment. You will not achieve the status of being the muttaqeen till you refrain from doing something that has no sin in it. Why? Because of the fear of falling into something which is sinful. How many of things would we have avoided in our life if we just implemented this hadith? Staying away from something that didn't look like it was sinful. But we take it for granted. And we're not cautious and we're not guarding our deen or our honor. So we go into it and then we fall into the haram. This was how the sahaba were. They didn't want to get into anything that could possibly even down the road lead them to sin. But look at us subhanallah. And how we look at these matters. Trying in any way to make the haram halal. Trying in any way to, what is, to, to make what is makruh or mubah, to make what is disliked, liked. This is what we have fallen into, belittling what is makruh, belittling what might be disliked. You're not questioning yourself, who is it disliked to? If your father or your mother or someone you loved with all your heart disliked something, whether it's the smell of fish, or that you extend your legs out in front of them when you're sitting, whatever it may be, any of these things, you wouldn't do it at least in their presence. Tayyip, if Allah is ever watchful over you, seeing you, hearing you, fully knowledge of you, then you must ask yourself with these things you want to label makruh. Who is it makruh to? Who is it disliked to? And are you comfortable still doing that? Yani if Allah was physically in front of you, then you should be doing, you should be in that way, 
Not wanting to do it even though you do not see Allah because you know Allah can see you and hear you and has full knowledge of everything you do. عن ثوبان رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لعلمن أقواما من أمتي يأتون يوم القيامة بحسنات أمثال جبال تهامة بيضا فيج فيجعلها فيجعلها الله عز وجل هباء منثورا قال ثوبان يا رسول الله سفهم لنا جلهم لنا أن لا نكون منهم ونحن لا نعلم قال أما إنهم إخوانكم من جلدتكم ويأخذون من الليل ما تأخذون ولكنهم أقوام إذا خلوا بمحارم الله أنتهكوها رواه ابن ماجة This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah The Prophet said I certainly know a people who will come Yom Al-Qiyamah they will come on the day of resurrection with good deeds like the mountains of Tehama ton of good deeds ton of prayers ton of sadaqah ton of fasting ton of umrahs and hajj ton of good deeds to their neighbors to their whoever maybe tons of good deeds they will come with those mountains of good deeds on the qiyamah but Allah is going to make them worthless he's going to make them scattered like dust like you see some big hill of sand and then a windstorm comes through and then the next day the level is the, the, the earth is level it's all scattered to different places not worth anything it's not a, a hill anymore Thawban he said oh messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam describe them for us tell us more so that we will not become of them while we do not know so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said they're your brothers they're from your race they worship at night as you do yani these are for the ones even getting up for tahajjud and qiyam al layl in the last thirds of the night coming with those good deeds yawm al qiyamah but it's going to be haba and mansura spread and scattered like dust He said they are from your race, from your people. They get up in the night like you get up in the night. But they are people who when they're alone, they transgress Allah's sacred limits. When they're alone, they sin. Because they think no one is watching them. No one can see them. No one can hear them. No one has knowledge of them. And this is like denying that Allah can hear you and see you and has, that He has full knowledge of you. Ibn Hajar, he said, it is pretending to be righteously outward. And transgressing the sacred limits, even committing the minor sins when you're alone, is something that is considered major. Yet we have done all small sin, minor sin, minor thing, so we do them. No, this is something that is considered major. The one whose habit is to make a show of being good to the people, but conceals his evil ways, causes more harm and misguidance to the Muslims because he has no piety, no fear of Allah. May Allah make us of those whose deeds count and they're not scattered like dust because we transgress his limits. In secrecy, أقول قلي هذا وصفر الله لي ولكم إذا الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're bringing all the proofs for this profound statement of Hatim al-Asam. He said, تعاهد نفسك في ثلاث Command yourself for three affairs. إذا عملت فاذكر نظر الله إليك وإذا تكلمت فاذكر سمع الله منك وإذا سكت فاذكر علم الله فيك He said, command yourself for three affairs. When you perform an act, remember Allah can see you, remember His sight over you. When you speak, remember Allah's hearing over what, you can, what you're saying, even if you whisper it to somebody else. And when you keep silent, remember Allah's knowledge over you. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah, He says, Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu shall we not tell, the, shall we not, should we, believers, inform you of the greatest losers with respect to their deeds? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعِيهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَحْسِنُونَ سُنْعًا They are those whose efforts will be lost in the worldly life while they think that they're doing well in their work. We do not want to fall into this category of spending a lifetime doing good work, doing good deeds, yet for it to be scattered like dust because we want to transgress Allah's limits when we're in seclusion, when we're in private. Remember that ayah, If there's three of you in a private conversation, Allah is the fourth in His knowledge. If there's five of you, Allah is the sixth with His knowledge. 
more or less of you, it doesn't matter. Allah is always fully aware, fully knowledgeable, all knowing, all hearing, all seeing over everything that is occurring on the face of this earth or in the heavens, seen or unseen. Abu Huraira, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, أَتَدْرُونَ مَا muflis." He asked the companions, do you know who the bankrupt, bankrupt person is? قَالُوا الْمُفْلِسْ فِينَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا دَلْهَمَ لَهُ وَلَا مَتَاعُ The person who is bankrupt from us is the one who has no dirham, he has no money and he's got no property. This is a bankrupt person. And all of us would agree and say the same thing. Because we look at bankruptcy as just a monetary thing. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم المفلس من أمتي من يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاته وصيامه وزكاته وَيَأْتِي قَدْ شَتْمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَأَكْلَ مَالَ هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَّ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا فَيَقْعُدْ فَيَقْعُدْ فَيَقْتَصُ هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ فَإِنْ فَنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُقْتَصُ يُقْتَصَ مَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ الْخَطَايَا أُخِذَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ فَطُرِحَ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ طُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث صحيح the Prophet ﷺ, he clarified now, no, the bankrupt person ain't the one who doesn't got no money and no land. The bankrupt person is the one who comes on the day of resurrection from my ummah. Again, he's saying this is from the ummah of Muhammad ﷺ. So they're, so they're with the shahada, they're with tawheed. Right? They will come, yawm al-qiyamah, from my ummah, with their fasting, with their prayers, with their fasting, with their zakat. They did these things, but they're also going to come having abused this person having falsely accused this person, having wrongfully consumed the wealth or eaten the wealth of another person, spilling the blood of that one, beating this one, so he will be seated, and this one is requited from his rewards. So his rewards will be taken away from the ones he wronged, till all of his rewards may be gone. And if his rewards are gone, then he will incur some of the sin of the ones he used to wrong. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, be mindful of this. We can come with the prayers and the fasting and the good and, and يعني, the good deeds. But look at what was mentioned. If you abuse this one verbally, insulting them, calling them by names, using foul language them, if you falsely accuse them of something they didn't do or they didn't commit, if you wrongfully consume their wealth, and here this is a this is a, a travesty again amongst the ummah because of especially taking the wealth of the mirath of the inheritance which Allah, He commanded in His book, in the Qur'an. It's not for you to say, well, I want to give this much to so-and-so when I die, and this much to so-and-so. Allah has already written that. You're allowed a bequeath of a third and no more. Yet you will still, still see some who engage in consuming wrongfully the wealth of somebody else, spilling the blood of this one, beating this person. To all have to, your, your sins taken away, to all have your good deeds taken away, and then for you to have sin added because all your good deeds ran out for someone to take away? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the young, the old, the one who is يعني, praying five times a day, the one who is struggling, with, whoever you may be, these problems of doing the outwardly in a good way so that the people can see him and maybe think you are righteous or, or praise you, but then to transgress in secrecy can ruin all your good deeds. And render all your good deeds to be void, to be null, to not count, to be scattered like dust. Haba'an manfura, as the Prophet said in the hadith. So remember that Allah hears you. Allah sees you. Allah has full knowledge of everything. So if you pray amongst the people so they know you pray. But then when you're by yourself, you abandon the prayers. Let this be a stark warning to you. Because if you abandon the prayers when you're in seclusion... You could fall under the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, Al-ahd al-ladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salaf aman tarakaha faqad kafar. The covenant between us and them, the believers and those who don't believe, is the prayer, the one who has left the prayer, faqad kafar has disbelieved, has entered disbelief. If you're being, being greedy with zakat, you might give in open, but then with what is obligatory upon you, and even an excess of sadaqah, you're tight-fisted, you withhold, know that Allah has full knowledge of you on this. The one who engages in drugs and alcohol and any type of khamr. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith, كل مسطر خمر وكل خمر حرام. 
everything that intoxicates is khamar. Not just beer and wine and alcohol as we know it. Any drug from marijuana to cocaine to ecstasy to any of the drugs that are out there to meth, all of these things are considered khamar. And every khamr is prohibited, it is haram. So some may not yani, show that they do these things to the people. And they do them and try to tell you, seek Allah's forgiveness. Ask Allah to forgive you. Ask Allah to guide you to stay away from it. But if you're doing this for a means of deception, then know that it may cause your deeds to be scattered, yawm al-qiyamah, and worth nothing up to you or for you. And the same goes with gambling. The one who will denounce it with their speech, but then they'll, they'll go to these casinos and, and buy some lottery tickets and engage in the lotto and the likes of these matters. These are from the kaba'ir, from the major sins, from the worst of sins that a person can do. Yet we find the brothers and the sisters engaging in these like heinous acts, major sins, many times in secrecy, denouncing it with their tongue, but then going and doing it themselves. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, ummul khaba'ir. Stay away from every type of intoxicant because it is the mother of all evils. And what was mentioned with khamr in the ayah? Allah says, they asked you regarding khamr, every intoxicant. Don't get in your mind that it's just alcohol, beer, wine, and the likes of these. Everything that intoxicates, all of those drugs intoxicate. All of them do. He said, they ask you regarding intoxicants and gambling. In them is great sin. Maybe some small benefit, but the harm, the evil, the sin outweighs the benefit. So stay away from it. Don't have anything to do with it. The same of these things, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, go for those who may يعني, appear in one way to not be engaging in haram acts like dating or pornography or any of these lewd things now so easy with social media. Be aware of these things. These are evil. You are transgressing Allah's limits and seclusion. Allah knows what you might be looking at on your phone or what you might be listening to on your phone. Those who just sit and they make it look like they're listening to Quran. The Quran might be even open in front of them but they're listening to music. Allah is fully aware of these things that you're doing. When you transgress His limits in seclusion, where you think nobody else knows, Allah knows, and it could cause your deeds to be of no avail, no weight, no benefit for you, Yom al Stay away from these things. Touching the hand, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, it would be better for us, for him, for a man, for a woman, to have an iron nail driven through your hand. No one would want this than for you to touch the hand or the body or any part of the opposite gender, of those who are not mahram to you. So not your mother or your sister or your daughter or your aunt or, uh, or your, your granddaughters or your grandmother. No. Those who are not closely related to you, obviously those closely related to you, you can do so, but those not. And we've become so free with it. And we might say, yes, it's difficult in the society. So what? You're choosing to live here. We're choosing to live here. I'm choosing to live here. We need to try and be mindful of these things. Why? They will lead to haram. They do lead to haram. So many of people belittled a handshake or a little hug and it only led them to zina. It might have happened to you or you might know someone who it happened to. So be mindful of these things, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah can hear us. Allah can see us. Allah has full knowledge of us. What he warned us of was for our benefit for us to stay away from. He's not trying to make you have a horrible life. Oh, you can't do this. Let everybody else indulge in it. And it's something which is halal. He only made haram what would harm us. What would be bad for us. He only made halal what is good for us and what would bring us good. So be mindful of these things. My brothers and sisters in Islam. Remember Allah's sight over you. Allah's hearing over you. Allah's knowledge over you. Whether others can see, hear, or know, is not the question. Allah always hears, always sees, always knows everything. Allahumma khalil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat, al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat, al-Ahyai minhum wa al-Amwat, inna ka anta sami'an qaribun mujib al-Da'wat, ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik, ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik.
اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على أعدائك وأعداء الدين اللهم انصر إخواننا وأخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم نفس كروبهم وثبت أقدامهم ورحم موتاهم وشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا رحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين